I think it's pretty safe to say that one of the most mysterious characters in the Star Wars sequel trilogy has got to be Supreme Leader Snoke. This is Mike Zero. If you guys are new to the channel, do make sure to subscribe to see future Star Wars content. Now, these past couple of months or so, we've been learning a whole lot more about this film when it comes to some of the set leaks, the set designs, the concept art and storyboard descriptions, and a lot of people have been talking about Supreme Leader Snoke and his involvement in this movie. Now, we do know that Snoke does have a lot of backstory to him. We do know that Andy Serkis, Ryan Johnson, and J.J. Abrams know the backstory of the character and are keeping it a secret in order if they want to tell more about him in a future film, which could very well be episode 9. Now, one of the descriptions goes over specifically about Snoke and Kylo Ren, of Kylo Ren inside of his throne room holding the ring that once belonged to Snoke himself. Kylo is looking at the gem on the ring. The throne room around him begins to transform into a vision of sorts in which he begins to see Supreme Leader Snoke before his injuries force choking an individual in a black cloak that may be Snoke's older apprentice before Kylo Ren. Snoke lets go of the figure for it to be left dead on the floor. The next goes over Snoke and his attendants inside of a vault of some kind, finding Sith artifacts, many of which consist of the Duarte statues that once belonged to Emperor Palpatine, and a gold ring without the gem on it. So I really wanted to go over a couple of things here that really do pique my interest about not only the character of Snoke, but also about his ring. Now, I don't know if you guys knew this, but the actual stone in his ring comes from Mustafar. In case you guys did not read The Last Jedi Visual Dictionary, you will learn that, of course, Supreme Leader Snoke's ring actually originates from the very planet that Darth Vader resided on and actually placed his castle, right? His fortress that was created by Lord Momin, a Sith heretic. So there's a lot of things going around on here, right? Now, this ring, I believe, most definitely has a special power. I don't know what the power is, and I believe that it most definitely has some kind of connection to Essence Transfer, perhaps, or something around those lines. A lot of people have been trying to figure out exactly how Snow could come back to life in a future Star Wars film. And if they are to do so, I think that the best way to do that is, of course, through his ring. Now, as Kylo Ren touches this ring, he goes through a vision in a similar fashion to when Rey touches the Skywalker lightsaber, and she gets sucked into a Force-back vision. So we can see the different parallels here that, you know, Disney, Lucasfilm, JJ, and crew are toying around with of inserting into this movie. Now, what do I think about Supreme Leader Snoke? I honestly love the character. The character really grew on me. I was really upset and kind of annoyed that the character was killed off so early on in the sequel trilogy. I would have loved it if they actually waited until, let's say, for example, the last film, Star Wars Episode Nine, where Kylo Ren would just flat out kill Supreme Leader Snoke. And I understand that they did this in order to pretty much make Kylo Ren his own master, where he's working on his own as Supreme Leader Ren, I could understand that. But at the same time, I feel like that we should have gotten more of the physical form of Snoke and just more out of the character for what he was in concept. So as far as the Duarte statues, you know, he's in this vault, he comes across the Duarte statues apparently, and that also comes with the Duarte ring. So the ring actually has glyphs from the Duarte on it. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Duarte, I've explained this before numerous times, very interesting part of Star Wars lore, and they actually once belonged to Emperor Palpatine, the statues. So you can see all of these connections, even in Legends, Plagueis actually owned them. You can see all these connections that they're really trying to kind of link between the Disney canon and the EU slash Legends material, especially when it comes to how Plagueis once owned, you know, the statues of the Duarte. Now, if we examine Supreme Leader Snoke, we do know that there is something about him. And one thing that Andy Serkis has said before in the past is that there is a certain grudge that he has against the Resistance. And that actually comes from his past. So I believe that his injuries are either caused by Luke or Leia or the Resistance themselves. You know, he actually holds a grudge against them for a specific reason that's linked to his injuries. 
So with that being said, I think that, you know, the fact that Snoke's identity is going to be explained in Episode 9 from what we have been hearing, that's a great thing because we'll get a better idea of exactly who he is. In case you guys didn't know this, by the way, there's this comic coming out right before the Episode 9 release date in which we will actually be learning more about Snoke, alright? It's going to be called Age of Resistance and one whole entire issue is going to be dedicated to Snoke, giving us new revelations, new facts about the character, and just kind of jumping into his life a whole lot more. So with that being said, guys, I would really love to hear your opinion on all of this. You know, what do you think about Snoke? Uh, what do you think about him as a character in Star Wars as a whole in the sequel trilogy? And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time. Next